When news matters, it matters where you get your news. WBHF News since 1946. And at 740 here on AM 1450 WBHF, if you have been following us on Facebook and you've been listening all morning long, you know that we've got a very special segment coming your way, and we will get right to it. There is a runoff election for two different positions here in Bartow County, Tax Commissioner and Bartow County Commissioner. Tomorrow, we will deal with County Commissioner. Today, we are dealing with the Tax Commissioner. It is my pleasure to welcome into the studio the two candidates who are in the runoff, Vicki Beck and Steve Stewart. We will start off with a 60-second opening statement from each of these two candidates, and then we have some questions that were prepared from the WBHF news staff. I always have the option of breaking in and adding an additional question or changing things up. Each candidate will have 60 seconds, up to 60 seconds, to respond, and then if there is a follow-up, there is a 30-second rebuttal, and then there will be time for a closing statement. So we'll do the same thing that we did last time. The, uh, they're very familiar with how I run things on these forums. So let's kick things off. We go from my left to my right. So first goes to Vicki Beck for her opening statement. Vicki? As you know, I'm Vicki Beck, and I'm the daughter of Irby and Jean Wilson Tatum, and I've been married to John Beck for 39 years. We're working on 40 now. I have 15-plus years of banking uh, in the banking industry with one-on-one -on -one experience with customers. I have been the department manager for an industrial company, and I have a work history as an office manager. I have handled money all of my working career, unlike my opponent who has managed facilities and buildings. I want to work for the people of Bartow County. I want what is best for them. I want what is best for the employees of the tax commissioner's office, and I will never expect those employees to be a part of any photo shoot that would be for my benefit. A tax commissioner's most important job is to collect the taxes due to the county and to pay out those taxes to the proper entities in a proper and timely manner. Chuck Holt, Judy Kilgore, and myself, Vicki Beck, ask all of our supporters to come back to the polls and show your support when you check back August 21st. All right, thank you, Vicki. Now we turn to Steve Stewart for your opening statement. Steve. Thank you, Al. Steve Stewart. I've been with the commissioner's office now for 25 years. Uh, as Ms. Beck said, I have not been in the tax office, but I do have 25 years' experience doing budgets, uh, something she has no idea how to do. Uh, I'm uh, married to the former Miss Connie Howard. We have been married going on 28 years this August 25th, so we're going to be taking a vacation after this is over. Uh, we've got two children, Elliot Stewart, who works at Phoenix Air. He's 24, and, and my daughter, who's in London right now, uh, 22. And uh, like I say, I worked for Commissioner Brown for 25 years, and uh, I planned the whole time. I planned the whole time. I planned to uh, a tradition of service is what I've been running on now. And what better what, what better tradition of service do we have than Jack Nally and Belinda Bailey? That's what I've got to say. All right. Those were your opening statements. We then uh, continue to alternate back and forth, so Steve Stewart will get the first question. With regard to the amount of money that does flow through the tax office, how will you personally ensure that everyone in the office is working to the highest ethical standard possible? Well, training is going to be a very important thing. It, it, they, we've got a very fantastic staff in that office. And Ms. Beck alluded to earlier that, that, I, you know, that I put pressure on them to be in a picture with me. That's that's absolutely false. Uh, they have a wonderful staff. Training is going to be a part of it. I will lean heavily on them, very heavily on them in the front end of this election if I'm elected, just just to uh, to get my feet wet. You know, we'll all be going to classes together on this House Bill 362 to learn what it's going to do to the tag end. And uh, like I say, no one in that office is going to be leaving. I love everybody in that office, and we'll be there when I start and be there when I leave, I hopefully. Okay. We'll ask that same question now to Vicki Beck. If you were to become the tax commissioner, what will you personally do to ensure that everyone in that office works to the highest ethical standard possible? Well, I think that all of those ladies have a real uh, positive ethical outlook on, in their work ethic. I've worked with them. I know how they work. I know what their standards are. You have $73 million going through that office, and you have to have trustworthy employees. And I think that you 
as a tax commissioner, you have to be trustworthy. And there's laws that you have to follow in collecting that money. There's, you know, and following the law is the most ethical thing you can do. You know, I can't imagine that anyone would would mishandle the funds of the of the people of the county. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. All right. And there we go. That's question number one to both of them. Let's go move very quickly to Vicki Beck. Now you get the next question. We live in the South, and whether we like it or not, religion does play a part in what people think of you. What role do you believe your religion has in this campaign, and what role will your religion have in the day-to-day operations of the tax office? Vicki? Well, I have had a strong uh, you know, presence. I have scripture written on my uh, signs. I have been involved in my church all my life. I was saved when I was 12 years old. I've tried. I have tried to always have a Christ-like spirit, Christ-like attitude, and I have not always done that. I have not always been that, and I have to ask for forgiveness of that on a daily basis. I will have a servant's heart for the people of Bartow County. I will. I want to serve those people. I want to serve, just like it says in the Bible. I want to serve the employees of that office. And I know Steve does, too. I know Steve has a servant's heart also, or he wouldn't be doing what he's done for 25 years. But I just I feel like that I am the better candidate for this office. And it's not saying that I'm a better spiritual person than Steve. That's not it at all. But I, I do have a personal relationship with my Lord and Savior. All right, Steve, we will ask you that same question. What role does your religion have in this campaign, and what role will your religion have in the day-to-day operations of the tax office? As Vicki said, I do, I do have a servant's heart. Uh, I've, I've been doing customer service for 25 years for all types of people. I don't care if you come in there with a three-piece suit on or blue jeans and a T-shirt. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I've asked the Lord to open these doors for me in this election. They've been opened abundantly through through uh, my friends helping me and, and, and financing and uh, I just ask the Lord to give me the courage to walk through the doors. That's the big thing. Uh, he's opened them up, and, I, and, and I'm trying to let him lead me in this campaign. And, and I sometimes try to get ahead of him, and, and that's, that's when I start having difficulties. But, uh, yeah, I'm just asking the Lord to open the doors and lead me through each door, and, and uh, we'll take what happens at the end. Okay. Next question I have is one that I'm going to add based on what you said just uh, in your opening statements. Uh, Steve, I'll go to you first. You made a comment about that you've been making budgets your whole life. Mm -hmm. How does that affect you as being able to be the best tax commissioner? Well, you have to work closely with the commissioner. I mean, every elected official, while they're on their own, they have to work with the commissioner on a budget. And the way things have been the last five years, my budget's gone actually gone down uh, as a facility manager. And... uh, I see that happen in the tax office. We're going to do, you know, we're going to work diligently to keep our budget down in the tax office. Uh, their budget now is like a hundred and three thousand, uh, million three hundred thousand dollars, and uh, that's been my budget just about, about verbatim uh, the whole time. So we're going to work to to keep uh, the collections high and the money in the, in our budget down. That's our goal. All right. We'll uh, ask kind of a various variant of that uh, question to you, Vicky. Now, you said in your opening statement that you've been handling money your whole life. How does that make you a better candidate for tax commissioner? Well, you have $73 million roughly coming into that office. You're handling money on a daily basis. You have to have an, an accountant's mindset, and I have worked in – with Peachtree Accounting, I've worked with uh, QuickBooks, those type of things. And you have to know how to, uh, the, the separate entities, you know, to where the money goes, what account it goes into, and paying that money out in a proper fashion. So you have to know how to, where to put the money in the, those accounts. You, and it's, the computer system really does a lot of that for you, and it's the inputting of, of those, uh, how you input those things. And so, with uh, handling, you know, I at times I'm sure that we I worked at the money center at SunTrust Bank, and we had uh, Six Flags uh, deposits. So that type of money is not, uh, you know, foreign to me. You know how to handle it and how to handle it in a in a timely and proper fashion. 
All right, let's move to the next question. This goes again right back to you, Vicky, since we're bouncing back and forth. You get first stab at this one. In the uh, tax commissioner's office, let's face it, you've got to also collect those taxes. That's a different job than managing the money that comes in. It's, a man it's managing going and getting it from people who are not paying it or not getting it in on time. What would you do to try to make sure that the collections are happening in a timely manner? Well, there's laws that govern uh, you know, how you handle that. Time frames of when you can place five phase or it liens on uh, people's property. You have to work with the people, you know, at first, and you have to uh, you have your first deadline for the payment to be made, and then you have when your first notice goes out that the tax is past due. So you have to follow all of those uh, in a timely manner, and you have to do it consistently for every person in the county. You cannot do one thing for one person and not do it for another person. It has to be consistent. So when you're, on, when you're consistently following the law and consistently doing what is correct, I believe that the people will know that you are not going to uh, let delinquent taxes just go by, but you've got to do the same thing for everybody. All right, Steve, we're going to ask you that exact same question. It's one thing to manage a department. It's another thing to now have the role of going out there and becoming almost a collection agent for folks that are not paying their taxes on time. That money helps keep things moving in the county. What would you do to make sure that we don't have delinquent taxpayers? Yeah, I've, uh, Alan, I've been thinking out, trying to think outside the box the whole time on this. Uh, we've got an alarming trend of... of uh, collections going down the last three years there's over three million uncollected dollars right now we're at 97 percent right now uh and and it, there, it's trickling in slowly but uh you know i'm thinking about expanded office hours i'm thinking about uh, uh split billing i think is uh more convenience for the taxpayers to pay their taxes i think uh everybody didn't go in work at nine o'clock and get off at four uh a lot of people come in at eight that extra half hour on each end of the day would uh be a big benefit to getting taxes collected. I remember years ago, Jack Nally and, Jack Nally and I would go to lunch, and he'd run by the business and, and pick their taxes up, so I'll be offering that service as well. All right. Let's uh, continue on something that you said in the first forum. You did talk about expanded hours, mm -hmm. but we also asked about how can you do expanded hours if there's a very tight budget already. What would you do to be able to expand hours without increasing your budget? Well, you do flex time. Uh, it's, it's a pretty simple process. Uh, Judge Mosley has started that already. Uh, you just you, you you give somebody a half a day at the end of the, at the end of the week, and we can get by without a, without an extra tag person or extra lot in, by the end of the week. Uh, what you do is uh, you take a half hour a day in the morning, and you just do flex time with the, the people that are willing to come in that the half hour early. It's just it'd be no no expense to the taxpayers at all. So, and and security is already there. Just to make sure as a follow-up, it's more about uh, ch taking the existing staff and spreading them a little thinner but wider. Right. All right. Let me ask you, Vicki, I believe you said something similar about wanting to expand or have the ability to have uh, expanded tax um, hours. Is that something you would consider without uh, what would ha I mean, how do you factor that in with uh, shrinking budgets and or a very tight budget already? I think you'd have to test those areas. You may want to at first maybe just to, uh, do it extended hours once one day a week, maybe in the morning. You have to be careful in the afternoon because I know that security uh, needs to be out of the building by 6 o'clock. So if you extended the office hours too much after the after 5 o'clock, you might have a customer that runs in uh, to and it would take longer than 6. That wouldn't happen very often, but I would be more inclined to do uh, an extended hours in the morning. And you would have to, you know, I would think cross-training some of the employees in order to fill in those areas with those people that you do have to let off early. Uh, you, you would have to have you know a cross-training going on through the, throughout the whole department. So if one, say the tag side of the department was overloaded, then you could pull someone from the tax uh, side of the department down to help with that load. But I do, I believe in cross-training people so that everyone knows every job in the office so that you can <clears throat> cover when you have more traffic in. 
Thank All right. you, people. Just a time for a couple more questions as we get ready to wind this down. You're listening to our Tax Commissioner's Forum between Vicki Beck and Steve Stewart. Uh, in the first round, of uh, with, when all four were running for Tax Commissioner, there was discussion about opening tag offices other th- or um, locations other than just at the courthouse. Is that something, Vicki, you would consider? And if so, how would you pay for it? I don't know that we could even consider it at this time because you'd have to have at least three people to run a satellite office. And then you're going to have to have security there. Uh, you'd have to have three people because you've got to cover for lunches. You can't leave a person there by themselves. I just don't think that that is something that really could be uh, looked at because the budgets are shrinking. I'm sure even next year the budgets, they're going to ask for the budgets to be cut even more. You know, the tax office budget is $26,000 uh, last this year than it was in 2011. So Doing satellite offices, I believe, is out at this point. I think that you can uh, offer, encourage people, you know, to mail payments in. You can uh, do the, like they're doing in uh, Unity Bank, you know, accepting tax payments there. You could, you know, offer that elsewhere before you can do satellite offices. Steve, let me ask you that exact same question because it did come up in the first round of our forums about having multiple locations. Is that something you would implement? And if so, how would you pay for it? It's, it's again. It's no. It's no expense to the taxpayer. We, we wouldn't open up satellite offices, Alan. It'd be uh, just just opening up accounts at the banks on the north and south end of the county. We already have it at United Bank, not Unity Bank, on the on the north end. They collected about fifty thousand taxes in Adairsville last year, and it's just. And most of the people that in the south end of the county live in the south end of the county, and they go south to work. So we would. Uh, we would open up something on the south end of the county, uh, bank-wise. It's just a matter of opening the account, and they deposit in, and we get the in, and they deposit back into our account, and we and we we disperse the funds. There's no expense to the county. All right. And uh, as we are winding down, I want to make sure each of you has a chance for a 60-second closing statement. We want to say thank you first and foremost for taking time to come in and chat a little bit about uh, your positions on various issues, and uh, thank you for coming in early. We start off in this case with Steve. Vicki had the opening, so you get to go first on your closing statement. All right. I'd just like to say that this has been a, a, a wonderful process. Uh, Chuck and Chuck Holt and Judy and, and Vicki have all been worthy opponents. Uh, and things. Have, it, it's been a fun election. I would, I would just like to say that, uh, you know, just to dispel that rumor that that's going around, I am not going to get rid of anybody in that office. I would not do that. I did not solicit the office's picture. Uh, Belinda Bailey said the whole time she was going to support me in a runoff. And the day of the picture, uh, I mean, just hours before the picture, the staff started calling me, wanting, wanting to be in it. So, you know, I didn't solicit anybody uh, to be in that picture, and I wouldn't hold it against any of them that did were not in the picture. Uh a matter of fact, at my reception, just about everybody in the office was at my reception that night of the primary. All right. That was Steve Stewart. Now, Vicki Beck, with your closing statement. Like I say, I am Vicki Beck. I have job experience in handling money, and I have experience in the tax commissioner's office on, the, on a day-to-day basis. And I want to serve the people of Bartow County. And I ask that you return to the polls on August the 21st and check back. That was short and sweet. We want to, again, say thank you so much, both of you. I know you're both uh, wanting to win this race, and I know it's hard sometimes when you want to distinguish yourself, but uh, I have to compliment everyone that ran for tax commissioner. It uh, didn't seem like it got anywhere close to what we see at the national level. So we want to say oh, no. thank you so much <laughs> for being here. want to remind everybody the polls. Uh, you have early voting going on this week. You can do that. And then the official date is August the 21st, and WBHF will have a full night of coverage. Thank you both again so much for coming in.